We are just waiting a few minutes. I want to say hi to everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Please sign up for everything Isomers. Be part of our community because we're cosmetic chemists and scientists. And we actually are on various platforms. We have a YouTube channel where we are doing content on YouTube. We're on Instagram. We're on Facebook. Facebook was like the first place we were at because we've been doing this for a while. And on TikTok. So this is really great. And we are, um, inter this, this really allows us to have this community and to talk mm -hmm. about the cosmetic chemistry and the science. We're manufacturers and this, and every week, this is the show that we bring to you every week to talk a little bit about behind the scenes, the science, some of the stories that are more interesting. So the innovation that we're gonna talk about today is exosomes mm -hmm. and you guys are loving our presentations. We're gonna to try to keep it short and sweet. We're not gonna draw it out, make it very long. So maybe we can call this 15 minutes with science, but here we go, exosomes. Right, so let's, get the show started. Uh, one thing I want to quickly talk about what Manola just said is that um, we need you guys because together we can do better, okay? Uh, all the feedbacks that we get from you guys, all the suggestions that we get from you guys, it can uh, really help us uh, do a better job to do the presentations and things like that. So you're doing an amazing job. Please keep communicating with us. Uh, we love uh, everything that you say, all the feedbacks that we get from you, and it is really helping us in terms of uh, creating better presentations. So let's go to the uh, cutaneous chemistry, and we're talking about exosomes. Here I try to put the picture of two cells here, and these two cells, you know, cells are cells that are next to each other. They're like family, okay? And when you have a good family, you have good communication. Cells communicate to each other. And uh, one of the mechanisms, the way that they communicate to each other is uh, via exosomes. So uh, in simple, simply put it together, we want to say, okay, what are these exosomes? Think of these exosomes as little tiny bubbles or letters, uh, packages that gets created within the cell. So within the cell, it starts with what they call an endosome. So the cell membrane actually caves in, and as it's caving in and creating this bubble, um, it will entrap information within the cell. And then, as a function of time, this bubble goes it's formed from inside the cell. In, just think about there's a little boundary here. This bubble is formed, it co collects everything, and then it goes to the edge of the cell and it comes out. And then that process gets repeated. It goes and has a way of attaching itself to another cell, and the package that was created inside this cell now it's going into another cell. So this is the way a cell provides information to another cell as to, it's called a cell signaling, saying that what you need to do, what am I doing, what's the news, okay? And this will help our skin to uh, make itself behave properly and do the, the right thing all the time. So uh, this process of communication is really, really important. And when this communication gets hindered, then our skin or our body, because exosomes are, is not just, it, it's not just in our, the cells of our skin. It's throughout our body, the cells in our body communicate with each other. One of the key mechanisms is exosomes. They're, they're, they're transferring information. Right, exactly. So this information could be for, you know, I mean, for regeneration, for just signaling as to what to do, repairing, and all these things. Now, what is really in this box, in this package, in this bubble? I drew a box, I could draw a bubble, I, I could draw a, a, a bubble. Um, signaling protein, so uh, think of like matrix cell, could mm -hmm. be a signaling protein, it could be in there. There are enzymes, uh, there are structural proteins, and there are lipids and fats. So there are mRNAs in there, 
iMRNAs in there. They, these are all information program that goes from one cell to another, how they have to behave. Now, how these exosomes benefit the skin? So look, exosomes help cell regeneration. They help encourage production of new cells. It gives information, it's a signal, it's a program. It helps stimulate collagen production. Uh, the, this is the protein uh, that gives the cell, the, uh, the, our skin cells, the elasticity, integrity, structure. Um, and then exosomes help reduce inflammation. That is really, really important. So, uh, you know, when it comes to acneic skin, rosacea skin, uh, having the right exosome signaling, it really helps. And I'm gonna get into a little bit of uh, more detail of that, just uh, telling you what's happening. Now, uh, these um, vesicles, the vehicles, uh, uh, that the b bacteria can create these uh, uh, vehicles as well. So these uh, vehicles, they can act as exosomes. So our body can actually recognize these uh, bacteria vehicles and they act as exosomes. So they can enhance skin's health. Again, all the things that the exosomes were doing from that is created in our body, then these bacterial exosomes can do as well, uh, reduce inflammation, increase um, barrier function of the skin, enhance collagen production, improve elasticity and firmness. And I have put a couple of uh, uh, references here from journals that the team is gonna uh, post it for you. So if you want to go a little bit more in depth, what kind of scientific work has been done on uh, exosomes that are created by bacteria and how those uh, bacteria really behave uh, in, in our skin and how they can benefit. So this is, a, the, the science of how bacterial exosomes can benefit the skin has already been proven and we are learning more and more and more about them. Now, I talk about exosomes and um, uh, why, why now we need to add it to the skin and why we need it to, we need to um, uh, supplement it. Why? Uh, as we age, the quality of these exosomes and how they're created and the information that they have in it and how they communicate to another cell uh, goes bad. It gets diminished. The effect of it is reduced and that causes a problem. It's like a photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy. The, the, uh, everything gets lost in translation and then in copying, and information now is not as good anymore. Now, the other thing that really happens is that we have these senolytic cells, okay? So let me try to explain to you. A regular healthy um, mechanism is that cells divide, they grow, they mature, and then they die. At one point, they die. There is a, there is a mechanism in our body, think about it as the death police, that they go find the cells that are not in good shape or health state, et cetera, et cetera, and they, they stop them. They put an end to those cells. They say, okay, you've done your job, thank you so much, now it's the job of the new cells. Forced retirement. Right. Now, there are cells that are called senolytic cells, okay? Senolytic cells, we also call them zombie cells. These are the cells that they do not divide anymore, they don't function properly anymore, but they are there. Now, by being there, they are consuming energy and also at the same time, they cause inflammation by creating a lot of inflammatory signals in our skin and in our body, it's not just our skin. I'm just constantly referring to skin because that's what we like to talk about. So these senolytic cells, as we age, their numbers increase, and the reason for that is that the police force that we have to control these senolytic cells, as a, as, as a function of time, they become weaker. 
they lose their efficacy, they lose their strength. And so these, the aging process, in a way, is that the number of these senolytic cells increase, they become disproportional, inflammation increase, misinformation is increasing, and then there is chaos, okay? And that causes the formation of all these signs of aging and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So one of the things that when we supplement our skin with exosomes is that we are trying to fight the effect of these senolytic cells, and we are trying to give good information and reducing the work on this police force that we have in our, in our body. So this is really where the exosomes come in and what they can do for our skin. So there are a lot of questions later on as to when I should use it, how I should use it, et cetera. That, that, just remember what I just talked about as to what happens at the age. So the human versus bacterial exosomes. Now, uh, there are pros and cons, and let's go over them, because I know that was actually one of the key questions, but I thought it was important to actually present it here. Um, if you get exosomes for a, from a very healthy young person, then they definitely outweigh the bacterial exosomes because they are more bioavailable to our, to our skin or our body. However, uh, there's a big if there. There's a big if. Uh, controlling the donors is not easy. What if the donor of the exosome is very old? Then those exosomes are not as good. So having a pool of young exosomes and how you do it and process it is one issue. The biggest issue in my, uh, in my books is the health of those individuals. Some people may not be as healthy and they don't know it. So they go and volunteer. Now, we have a lot of pathogens, viruses, uh, prions that they may exist. And this selection of filtration of removing of all those or uh, marking those bad donors, it can be very difficult and mistakes can happen. So, uh, and then because of that, because of that very fact, the uh, regulatory agencies are, are very hard on the manufacturers that want to use uh, human-sourced exosomes in, uh, into uh, regular applications like skincare. It's very, very, very difficult to get approval. And then once it's approved, um, I still do not, uh, I have to be honest with you, I will not trust it as much unless I actually go visit and audit the facility and look at all their records. Because there is a lot going on in there and a little mistake can cause a problem. And uh, in, in one of the future shows, I'm gonna talk about, uh, uh, I, I like us to talk about bacteria, viruses, and prions because uh, there are certain things that we can do to control viruses. There are certain things we can do to control. But prions are a different beast. Like when we talked about mad cow disease, you remember when that happened in, uh, it started from UK and God knows um, how many millions of uh, uh, sheep, uh, not sheep, uh, cows, they, um, they got uh, destroyed because they had no way of treating them because prions are, are not controllable, okay? We don't, any have, we don't have any science um, at our disposal right now to destroy prions and some viruses, we don't have the science behind it. So it is very, very important to source these things properly and going to a bacterial source, in, even though with the efficacy part of it, uh, it may be slightly weaker but it's still extremely effective and it's a lot safer because we have total control over that process and it's done right in the lab, cultured in the lab, grown in the lab, purified in the lab, and therefore we have more trust on it, we have more control over it. Yeah, it's, it's also, it's much more ethical, it's safer, right. it is effective. Right, not to the same extent, right. but it is effective. So it's, the one, it's like the best alternative, it's the best way of doing it. Because also when you have something that's standardized in a laboratory, 
that control is important. Right. Really, truly, because there's so many things that you could get that you don't even know you have yet because we don't have the equipment to be able to measure it yet. It had, that science hasn't occurred. So we think we know this much, but there's also yeah. other, because you, exactly. you always end up learning and more and more. Putting all these things in a bubble, it also makes it more affordable. Uh, if you want to use, uh, because of all those additional steps, the regulatory requirements, the regulatory testing, Sourcing. and all those additional things, the Hard cost testing, of processing this, it becomes uh, really high. And um, I, I think uh, the very first exosomes that are really going to become really good and commercial, they will be really high-end drugs. In terms of skincare, I, um, I, I yet have to see a really good source. Thanks so much the, for tuning in, yes. Eyes TV. Until next week. Oh, next week's topic is going to be? Oh, comment down below what you want next, week topic, next week's topic to be. But you have until midnight Friday to let us know. So do yes. it now.